communication today is harder than ever before. I know, I know. Groundbreaking news, right? This just in. Sliced bread is pretty great. And the earth revolves around the sun. (laughs) All of the of course it's true statements aside, it is a fact that the communication challenges we face in this connected world we live in and work in far outweigh the communication complications of the past. And nowhere is it more complex than in IIoT. But in this case, we can make it easier, faster, and use less energy if we just use the right solution. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Industry 4.0, with its variety of sensing solutions and field bus systems, can make communication pretty tricky. But single-pair Ethernet can change all of that. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I bring in representatives from three different companies, Analog Devices, Harding, and Worth Electronics, to discuss the benefits of single-pair Ethernet, what the new IEEE standard means to single-pair Ethernet designs, and what you should consider when working on your next single-pair Ethernet design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic. Hi, Fiona. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks very much for having me today. Hi, Jakob. Thank you for joining me. Hello, Amelia. It's my pleasure. And hi, Martin. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. Nice to meet you here in this meeting. Okay, so first off, Fiona, why are we talking about single-pair Ethernet today? Single pair Ethernet and the new IEEE standard for 10 based T1L connectivity promises to awaken the reality of seamless connectivity from the edge of our process and our factory networks to the cloud. In doing so, it will enable access to new data, new insights from edge devices, and drive improvements in productivity, efficiency, and reducing overall system downtime while optimizing our energy consumption. So here, edge devices within our factories and our process facilities, we will get real-time configurability with single-pair Ethernet and we'll get new and auxiliary information like maybe diagnostics or the usage of, of our raw materials rate. And multiple measurement variables can now be communicated. So it'll make the possibility for all our devices to be more connected and interconnected. And that gives access to new data and information, which ultimately enables better decision making. You know, if you're talking about Industry 4.0 or IIoT or digital manufacturing, smart factories, whatever buzzword you want to use, it's really all about making smart sensors and making them enable them to be connected to centralized decision making. And to do that, the connectivity is key. And that's where single pair Ethernet and our IEEE standardized technology will enable direct communication from the sensors to the control or indeed the enterprise system. And the really nice thing about single pair Ethernet is that it's Ethernet. So it is a standard. So you get interoperability from the start, which is the key to this seamless interconnectivity of devices on our factory floor. Data now will start out as an Ethernet packet and traverse the network as an Ethernet packet all the way to the cloud. And Martin and Joachim will talk about, you know, the complexity and how that simplifies our network. And what we're talking about here is enabling this barrier-free networking from the sensor to the cloud. And it is ideally suited to transmitting this data and this increased volumes of data that we see from the edge. So, Jakob, why have your three companies come together and what in particular are you trying to achieve? Yeah, it's a very good question, Amelia. Harting is a specialist for industrial connectivity, ADI for semiconductors and VUD for magnetics. So it means basically we don't have too much in common, but we have the same customers and cover different topics. And this is our strength. So all those three companies, we are pushing, strongly pushing the new technology of single pay Ethernet and combining our products is all customers need to develop an electronic device based on single-pair Ethernet. And this is what we are going to explain here. And this is how we are going to let customers know how they get these components in order to build their own devices. All right. So let's move on over to industrial environments. 
So Martin, what do you think are the benefits of single pair Ethernet, especially in industrial environments? The most obviously one is that single pair Ethernet only uses two wires instead of four or eight as for standard Ethernet. This reduces the cable diameter and less raw material is needed, especially copper. The weight and size reduction is also good if we think on trains where each additional gram is related with higher cost over lifetime. Or if we think on wire routing inside small machines where the bending radius is smaller than the bending radius with Ethernet cables. The second big advantage is the long reach of 1000 meters in combination with a data rate of 10 megabit per second. This enables high-speed communication over long distances, for instance, for smart sensors in large factory halls or for elevator applications. And of course, single pair Ethernet brings more simplicity to factory and process automation, as you can create direct connections from the sensor to the cloud with only one system. But I think more details about simplicity will follow soon in this discussion here. Okay, great. So, Jakob, what are the challenges designers are encountering today, especially in factory and process automation? Yeah, I think the application itself plays a major role. So in the factory automation, nearly each company promotes the industry 4.0 and the IIoT, so the industrial internet of things. But what people sometimes forget is that a seamless communication from the IT to the OT, or in other words, from the end device, the sensors, the actuators, to the cloud or the data center, this is key for industry 4.0. And exactly this seamless communication is not existing today. If we have a look on the factory automation, we have the office world where the standard Ethernet is clearly dominating. We have the control level. So if we move to the factory, we have the control level where industrial Ethernet is dominating. And now comes the point if we go to the field level, to the end devices. And there we have a variety of many, many different field bus systems. And why do we have this variety? One point is that industrial Ethernet, when it was introduced to the market around the year 2000, was not able to meet the real-time requirements which are needed in the field level. This is one point. And the second point was with the existing gigabit and fast Ethernet cabling, there is no cost-efficient, suitable way to connect, physically connect those end devices like sensors and actuators to the Ethernet network. And due to these two reasons, a lot of field bus systems are still dominating in the field level. And this, as I explained in the beginning, is a pain point to realize the sort of industry 4.0 because all new business models and digital services, they are mainly based on the data collected by the end devices, and those data must be transparent to the office level. And um, this is the pain point. And today, to realize the communication between the field bus systems and the industrial Ethernet, complex gateways are needed to translate between those different communication protocols. There are specific uh, skills of people needed to realize the gateways. And for example, even the sensor manufacturers, they have to provide sensors for all the different uh, field bus protocols. I would say this is really the main point and the pain point. Okay, great. Now, Martin, how will single pair Ethernet solve these challenges? Well, I think the keyword here is seamless connectivity. In the picture here, you can see that some things have changed because now all different field bus systems are replaced by the single pair Ethernet and all the gateways are replaced by single switches. In difference to the field buses, single pair Ethernet is an IP protocol like standard Ethernet. And this means that data can be sent directly from the sensor to the cloud. And you can now plug all the different devices to the switches and compare to the gateways, which needs to operate with many different data protocols, a switch is much more simple, is a much more simple device, and they are also less power consuming. So if every sensor and actuator is directly connected to the cloud, a worker in the office, for example, can see if a device is running in between its operation limits or not, or if it needs to be maintained. And so if everything gets connected with single pay Ethernet, the factory area is much easier to maintain and of course in less time. Okay, so Jakob, tell me a bit more about this technology. Yeah, sure. So the background of this technology is coming from the automotive market. So all the big car manufacturers like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Toyota, and so on. Some years ago, they realized that due to the autonomous driving and the increased number of sensors inside a car, the cabling inside a car is extremely increasing. 
and putting all those cables together as one part and compare the weight to the other parts of the car. The cabling is one of the top three or would develop to one of the top three parts inside a car. And this is why those automotive companies said, okay, we need something new. And they came to the broader reach technology. And this is a single pair Ethernet communication. And this was some years ago. And when Harting heard about this, we directly remembered ourselves to the CAN bus in the 80s, which was also coming from the automotive market and afterwards developed due to its advantages in the building automation and the factory automation. And we saw the same trend or the same potential here also for single pair Ethernet. And for the applications, which were just described to connect the, the sensors and the actuators of the field level. And if we have a look on the technology here on the slide, the technology is not too complex. So we have, and we all know fast Ethernet, where we have two pairs of copper wire to transmit Ethernet. One pair is going to transmit information. The other one is going to receive information. Then with the trend to increase data rates and everything is getting faster and, and more speed. The gigabit Ethernet was developed and there we have even four pairs of copper wires and each pair is able to transmit and to receive information. And by this, we can realize even data rates up to 10 gigabit. And now single pair Ethernet is very easy. So it's the principle of gigabit Ethernet, but using just one single twisted pair. On the right hand side, you can see, for example, a comparison of the standard gigabit cabling. So it's a four pair cabling, eight copper wires. And on the right hand side, it's really the single pair Ethernet cabling. And you can imagine if we want to connect a lot of cheap sensors inside of a machine, it doesn't make much more sense to use single pair Ethernet. It's much more cost efficient than using really a four pair gigabit Ethernet cabling. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Fiona, how is this different from standard Ethernet? So firstly, you know, Riakam noted there that there is some existing broad reach standards for single pair Ethernet. And I guess if we look at the most recent one around the IEEE 802.3 standard, which looks at 10 base T1L technology, and that's what we're, we're kind of going to focus on for this comparison here. But here it looks at 10 megabits of data, but some of the other broad reach technologies can go up to 100 megabits and beyond. But they do have some limitations around proprietary nature of some of those. So firstly, on the bandwidth of 10 megabits per second, this is, you know, a considerable increase in bandwidth over existing technologies. And like Joachim mentioned, there's CAN, but there's also a lot of still analog technology deployed in our factories and in our process environments. So 4 to 20 milliamp heart, RS-485 as well. And 10 megabits will actually provide a substantial increase in bandwidth over what these legacy technologies have been able to accommodate. And it will mean that these rich data sets that we've all been talking about that reside at the edge can now be transferred to the cloud and we can capture those new insights from the host of remote sensors and nodes across our factory floors. Now, standard Ethernet, you know, that Yaka mentioned there, fast Ethernet can go up to, you know, 100 megabits. We have gigabit technology. But when we consider what we're replacing in a lot of the edge nodes, 10 megabits will really be transformative for capturing these new insights at the edge. Now, the second thing we look at is reach. And Martin mentioned, you know, this one kilometer. And that's very important because in our factory floors and in our field level devices, there can be deployed in very remote, hazardous, hard to access areas which can be substantial distances from our control or our factory switch networks. So the ability to now provide Ethernet connectivities over that one kilometer of cable is what's very important here. And if we see things like standard Ethernet, where we mentioned those four or eight wires, they were really limited to what we think of as around 100 meters. Now, some of the technology can go a little bit beyond that, but the, you, know, you are constrained by the standardization beyond that limit. So there is restricts interoperability if you moved beyond 100 meters. But with 10-based T1L technology, you actually get a full one kilometer of reach and you get that full 10 megabits of bandwidth. So when you look at legacy technologies, what you see there was, yes, you could get reach in some cases, but you wouldn't be able to achieve a high bandwidth at that one kilometer. Now, another very important point that we haven't touched on so far is the ability to deliver power over data line. And field sensors, you know, require power and the ability to deliver that power over the cable is critical, particularly when we look at remote locations. And power over a single twisted pair means 
You do not need to deliver separate power lines to each individual sensor. So when Joachim talked about, you know, cabling, additional cabling and cabling weight and cost, you're reducing here the number of cables you need to deliver for power. And data and power can be then transmitted on that one single copper pair. So 10-based T1L technology enables increased levels of power as well to be supplied to our end nodes versus some of those legacy technologies that we've previously mentioned. And another important point is intrinsically safe environments. And this is particularly important for the process industry. It's the ability to deliver Ethernet connectivity to edge nodes in explosive proof environments. So Xeon Zero intrinsically safe applications. And there's very stringent power dissipation requirements. And the low power consumption of this 10-base T1L technology is designed really to support that use case. Okay, that makes sense. Now, Martin, how can I start developing single-pair Ethernet solutions today? Yeah, the good news is you can start to develop your single-pair Ethernet solutions today. The long answer for that would be that, especially this year, we see an increasing number of companies developing or starting their development for single-pair Ethernet, or they are in the middle of the development for single-pair Ethernet. For the industry, most important is 10 base T1 at the moment. And since 2019, the IEEE standard for 10 base T1, the IEEE 802.3 CG, is finally released. And since this year, we have also the Phi chips available for the standard. So the central component for single pair Ethernet is available now. Besides the chips, also the needed magnetics are available, at least for 10 base T1 and for 100 base T1, and as well the connectors and the cables are. One additional point, and this is what Fiona mentioned, is the power over data line, or so-called Poodle. Poodle is a technology to send electrical energy over the same cables like you use for single-pair Ethernet data. With this, you can supply switches and field instruments with power without the need of an extra cable or a battery. So to make this possible, Poodle needs controllers for sending and receiving current, and those controllers are also available now. When we look on the market, then we also see more and more complete applications as the first field switches on the market. Others, like the sensors, will follow soon. Excellent. Now, Fiona, tell me a little bit about the physical layer and how it operates. Yes. So Analog Devices has brought to the market industry-leading technology for 10-base T1L, a complete family of solutions, and they cover both the physical layer in terms of a Phi, but also a unique Mac Phi. And I guess the key thing is they're designed for ultra low power consumption. So they enable system designers to optimize power budgets for use on, you know, critical measurement and processing electronics in their signal chains. And you can see from the slide, adding a Mac Phi in terms of power, we're adding very small amount of additional power, less than four milliwatts. But from a system perspective, you can leverage a much lower power processor. So at a system level, you have a much lower power system design. And that's all about optimizing your partitioning so you can minimize your overall system power. And that's particularly important when we're thinking about these edge nodes that we've been talking about, you know, which are smaller and low power is critical. Now, the MacFi also has a number of additional benefits which are important to note. Because they enable connectivity to our host controller with SPI, it removes the need for that processor to actually have an integrated Mac. So to support things like MII, RMII, or RGMII interfaces. So this simplifies your overall design and it enables, you know, reuse of your existing maybe processor and software investments where, you know, that legacy processor may not have supported an Ethernet Mac. So it means you can get up and running much faster with the 10-base T1L solution by leveraging your SPI interface. And then the MacFi can do more of the packet filtering and the traffic management for you as well. So offloading some of that burden from your processor. You know, both of the products, they're available today. They're fully tested and proven, particularly for the auto negotiation mode of operation and with reaches up to 1.7 kilometers. So I know Martin mentioned, and I also mentioned this one kilometer reach number. And we should note that for the IEEE standard, it specifies one kilometer. And given that you can't, in a lot of applications, guarantee what your link partner will be, so what will be at the other end of the cable, you can only design really to the standard, which is that one kilometer. 
but to show the capabilities of the physical or technology and this new technology in the market, we have proven the robustness over much longer reach of up to 1.7 kilometers. And of course, the auto negotiation enables that faster and more robust link up, which is important for robust communication. And I guess we've also extensively tested our solutions, you know, over a host of cable types from Harting, over a host of filter magnetics from Vort Electronics. And it, we've deployed them and tested them in noisy environments, you know, in collaboration with our partners. And this is to ensure that the technology is robust and that our customers can get to market fast with proven solutions. So, you know, please consult uh, our data sheet for the most up-to-date information on any of the testing and cable diagnostics we would have ran. Both of the products are available now from our partner, Mauser.com, and they are specified up to 105 degrees C operation. So, Martin, what kind of filtering works best with the FISE Fiona just mentioned? What we are using is a transformer solution. As this solution comes with 1.5 kV of isolation, which fulfills safety requirements according to the IEC 62368-1. This is an industry requirement. These are the same safety requirements that are also valid for the standard Ethernet. Besides the high isolation, the transformer solution for 10 d one has strong return loss performance benefits in the lower frequencies and its footprint is also very compact. So what we see here in this picture is the 10 base T1 circuit on the left-hand side in the top picture and the same circuit, but with power over data line. And this rendered picture here, this is also the power over data line solution. So now I'm explaining the 10 base T1L. On the left-hand side, you can see the TVS diode. This is for ESD suppression. And in light blue, you see the transformer. This is for the 1.5 kV of isolation. In green, this is the termination that you need. It's the termination to the ground, and this is also for come mode rejection. The special thing here is the capacitor C3, which is put in between the two middle pins. And with this capacitor, we have a very good return loss in low frequencies, starting with 35 kilohertz. The picture below, this is the 10 base T1L with power over data line. Basically, this is the same, like I said, like the 10 base T1 solution without power over data line. But here we have the L1. This is a filter choke, a cam mode choke to improve the so-called differential to cam mode. And we have L2. This is a filter choke for the power path. Both solutions, the 10 base T1 and the 10 base T1L solution for power over data line, are designed to reach the 1.7 kilometers. And they are tested with the analog devices, fire chips, and the Harting connectors. Okay, so Joachim, is there any standardized connector tailored especially for industrial applications? Indeed, yes, it is. So connectivity and the standards for connectivity play really a very important role because devices of many different device manufacturers needs to be connected at the end application. And there are international cabling standards like the ISO IEC or the TIA, and they have specified for industrial applications the connectivity according to the IEC 63171-6 as a shall be used interface. And we as Harting, so we are fully following this decision and not only Harting, also all 50 members of the SPE industrial partner network, companies from many different industries, from connectivity, from cabling, from switches, they are all following this interface, this IEC standard. What is the big advantage of the standard? So first of all, the standard is complete. It covers connectivity for each application needed. So it begins on the picture here on the IP20 solutions. We have M8 solutions with different locking systems. So from snap-in or M8 push-pull. The standard contains even M8 hybrid interfaces. So there are two power contacts and two data contacts. So this is an alternative solution. If you don't want to make Poodle power over data line, you could also use a hybrid interface. And we also have M12 connectors with screw and push-pull. So means this standard, the Dash 6, really covers products for each application. And a further advantage is that this design supports data rates from today 10 Mbit, but it's future-proofed. So it also supports data rates in the future for any other SPE standards for up to 10 gigabit. 
So as you mentioned, Harting is a specialist for industrial connectivity. So all our connectors, they have a robust design. They are shock and vibration proofed according to railway standards, which are the most demanding standards in the industry. We also put a lot of attention to a reliable contact system. So the first connectors of Harting, they are already available in serious production. They are available at mauser.com. These are the IP20 cable plugs you can see on the right-hand side and the IP20 PCB jacks. We offer the cable connectors as connectors to self-assemble those at the customer side. But of course, we also offer pre-assembled cable assemblies. So Jakob, what about the SPE cable in this sense? Yeah, it is the same story we can say. So also here, the ISO IEC and the TIA, they have specified cabling for SPE applications for industry. And they choose the IEC standard 61156 and all the different standards you can see on the bottom right-hand side. And compared to conventional four-pair gigabit data line, the single-pair Ethernet diameter is reduced by about 25%. The weight and the volume of the cable is reduced by even 50%. And the bandwidth is even increased to 600 megahertz. So you can expect that in the future, there will be a variety of different cables which are suitable for trailing, for torsion, for robotic applications. There will be oil and fluid resistant cables with many different jacket materials. So we as Harting already offer on the mauser.com page the cables, the raw cable for poor. But we will in the future, of course, extend these products to even further jacket materials. Okay, so Fiona, where can I go to find out more? Yes, Emilia. So if you want to get started, and design a 10 base T1L single pair Ethernet compatible, you no know, field instrument, field switch, sensor node, actuator. Then ADI, Harting, and Vort Electronics combined has the silicon, evaluation platforms, media converters, magnetics, cables, and connectors available now to get you started. So check out, as Jakob mentioned, Mauser.com for the most up to date information and to order your samples. You can also, of course, visit each of the vendors' websites where you will find a host of additional information on this technology and how to leverage it in your design. Now, by working together, our three companies will help you simplify your development process, speed your time to market, and reduce your overall development risk. Single-payer Ethernet will awaken new possibilities in our factories and process facilities, as we've outlined in today's talk. By providing access to new data and insights over these long reach cables from edge nodes, which these edge nodes up to now have had very limited or no real time connectivity or configurability. So single pair Ethernet will awaken new possibilities in our factories and process facilities, as we've discussed in today's presentation. And they do this by providing access to new data and insights from sensor nodes over very long reach cable runs. And of course, we mentioned previously, up until now, these sensors had very limited connectivity and no real-time configurability. The single-pair Ethernet revolution is happening, and together we can help get you started and make you successful. Single is more. All right. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Fiona. Thanks, Amelia, for having me, and it was great talking with you again. And thank you for joining me, Martin. Thank you very much, Amelia. And thank you for joining me, Jakob. Yes, thanks a lot. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.